Tonight is one of the most celebrated Australian statesmen of modern times. He started his career as the entertainment officer at a club in Sydney and has risen to the heights of being the Australian cultural attaché to the court of St. James. I couldn't agree more with the critic who said that he impugns the fundamental refinement of the Australian character. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Les Patterson. Yes. And hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, right. yeah, I've got, a, I've got a, I must got a handful of Vaseline. Or something. How are you feeling? I'm not feeling too bad. Oh dear. Now, of course, images. <laughs> Im Oh, sorry, Mike. What is it I've got in my hands? Oh, it's a, it's a, it's an ointment I'm supposed to use. <laughs> I was, I was just giving myself a quick application before the show. I'm supposed to use an applicator, but I generally do. No worries. So, uh, yeah. Now let's let's talk. <laughs> You'll be all right on your next trip to the Philippines, mate. <laughs> Are you with me? No worries. Now, this thing about image is obviously terribly important to me. That's part of your job. Now, what is it? What's the image that you're trying to, to project? I think you'd better phrase that again, Michael. I think... <laughs> What is the image that I am bloody successful in projecting, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? And that is, as a, Australia, as a thinking organism. <laughs> you know, it wasn't very many moons ago. What you do to old Brian Humphrey, you just heard <laughs> like, the poor bastard with ashes. <laughs> I seen him out there. You? Oh, Christ, you must have given him a rough time. <laughs> We talked about getting on the grog. Oh, Christ, eh? It's stuck into it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's very good to be here on the Parky Show. You know, you could say this is the International Year of Australia already, couldn't you, Mike? Well, you could. It's been fantastic, the publicity we're getting, and largely due to the efforts of my good self. You know, it wasn't many moons ago that they thought we were a bunch of rough diamonds down. <laughs> but you know, we've got more culture than a penicillin factory in Australia. I'm telling you that. No worries. Well, I suppose that they talk about culture, the main thing that people know Australia for now, the, the movie industry, the films, Australian films. Have you got anything to do with them at all? Yes, I kicked it off. You did you? <laughs> oh, yes, I was... Uh... <laughs> I was very much instrumental in getting movies off the ground in Australia. They'd been going along a long time with Chip Rafferty and that uh, fraternity, but they needed to be dragged kicking and screaming into the 20th century, Mike. And uh, I'm very proud of... I'm very proud of the role. I'm very proud of the role that I've played there. You know... The trouble with the film industry, as it is with the yachts in general today, is that the, the poofter element. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, I don't mind what people do in the privacy of their own homes. Don't get me wrong on that score, ladies and gentlemen. Please. <laughs> you know, I see eye to eye with old Ken Livingston in that particular matter. But what I'd like to say is this, that... You know, there are a lot of... Uh, the industry needs a fair bit of weeding out and, uh, you know, it's rife with the pufters in Australia, as it is here. You know, uh, I had a lovely idea for a film a few years ago. It was going to be... It was about a football team uh, going to the bush. It was called Piss Up on Hanging Rock, as a matter of fact. And uh, by the time... No! Are you with me? By the time the Puff Mafia, or the Puffia as I call them, had got onto that, they'd cut, turned them all into Sheilas, drifting around in the nursery curtains, and getting eaten by the abos in there. 
<laughs> but what about a film like Gallipoli, which has had tremendous critical acclaim both here and in the movie? Again, you see, the movie industry's got out of my hands. <laughs> Gallipoli, in my opinion, is a better description of that film. Two fellas, I don't say they're shirtlifters. I don't say that. <laughs> I don't say they're shirtlifters, but they could be. They could be, and that's how it comes across, you know? Giving the Turks the wrong idea, you know? Mind you, they've had the wrong idea for a year or two, haven't they? Eh? Oh, no do, do, do you know many uh, people within the film industry intimately, though? I mean, I'm thinking of actors or actresses. <laughs> well, I do, naturally. I've had... To... <laughs> We hear the boys in the band over there for Christ's sake, eh? That'll do, fellas, eh? <laughs> no, I've been a bit... I've done a bit of casting, Mike. I have. I've done a bit of... I mean, it's not for nothing I'm known as the Protestant Lou Gray. I'm not. I am. We've got a lot in common, you know. Well, we're a couple of tycoons, and it's significant, isn't it, that old Lou's enterprise is being taken over by an Aussie corporation, an Aussie conglomerate, a conglomerate. And uh, they're a bit afraid, of course, it'll lose its Englishness, but old Lord Grey, English? Well, rumour has it he's a Bulgarian tap dancer. I don't know. <laughs> but he's very nice and a close personal friend, I hasten to yes, say. Well, you've got many, many... But people. a lot of the actresses, you know, I mean, uh, I know them all personally. I can't name names on this show because... Uh, you know, there's been moments when when my fidelity to my wife has been put to a pretty severe test <laughs> and come off second best, I can tell you. <laughs> can you think of, uh, of any, I mean, was this a question of girls being being forward, being uh, oh, overwhelmed by your sexuality? They do get a bit. You know, I, was, uh, I had an embarrassing experience uh, in a London taxi. Uh, hmm? uh, yes. We were, I had this little lass. <laughs> she was a star of one of my films. And uh, we, I was showing her the sights of run, and you know, Buckminster Castle, St Paul's <laughs> Abbey, <laughs> Trafalgar Circus, and we're driving around. <laughs> and I kid you not, you know, this little Sheila done a streak in the back seat of the car. Yes. I didn't know where to look. <laughs> and we got to our destination, the driver says, that'll be so and so, you know. And uh, he says, how are you going to pay me? And she, fl oh, I'm sorry, I can't say it, but she done an Erica. America. She done an Erica, but not the top part. She flashed the map of Tasmania, ladies and gentlemen. Now, no, for those of you who aren't too crash out on the geography, Tasmania is a triangular continent. A bit on the bushy side. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> anyway, to cut a long story short, the driver said, haven't you got anything smaller? <laughs> All dressed up like a pox doctor's clerk on this show tonight. You know, it's a bit over the top, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry, but I've just come from an affair of state. What was that? Oh, just some that'll do in Oz House. But uh, I think it was a dried fruit convention, as a matter of fact. <laughs> you can't get away from them, can you? You're a, you're a great... <laughs> A great statesman and, and a diplomat, Celeste. You have to be, you Mike. Have. You're up but front. I'm up right. there, f uh, up front, the whole bloody time. You know? You with me? It's stressful. It's a tremendous strain. I was disappointed I didn't get the job of Governor General of Australia. I would have thought you made a very You know, it was between me and the Prince of Wales and an outsider come in. No worries. Good luck to him. But I'm over here in London. I've been fronting up for Australia for many, many years. I've been taking the knocks and I've been taking the kudos and it's been a tremendous amount of fun. Have you modelled yourself on anybody in all those years? Well, as I say, there's a bit of Lord Grey, there's a bit of Henry Kissinger in me. I see myself... <laughs> I see myself as the... as Australia's answer and General Haig. There's a bit of him in me. You know? There's a bit of General Haig in me. Which bit? Well, I don't mind a drop of the Hagues at any time, ladies and gentlemen. You with me? 
that... No, I, my mother always said, never trust a man who doesn't drink, and I don't. I, I like a drink. I'm not ashamed of that. As a matter of fact, you know, I'm as full as a pommy complaint box at the moment. <laughs> you have... I mean that in a very nice way, too. So, Les, do, do you have any artistic leaning to yourself? I mean, do you write anything at all? Do you write... I, I write the odd poem, you know? I've got a serious streak to me. And there's a lot of lonely women who wait. And I've dedicated a song to them. Yeah. Not many people think I can sing, and I'm going to prove it to you now. <laughs> this is a song. It's a song dedicated... It's a song dedicated to my wife, Lady Patterson, amongst others. It's got a nice little lilt to it. You know, it's a case of... I reckon it's a case of eat your heart out, George Melly, as far as I'm concerned. I feel a song coming on, ladies and gentlemen. OK? Me job takes me miles over land and sea But home is the place I'm always longing to be There's a little old Sheila waiting for me And she's my old lady The years have rolled by since she was a bride Now and then I enjoy a little bit on the side she might smell a rat, but she's got plenty of pride Cos she's my old lady I sometimes forget to sling her a quid She never gets too much love But no matter how I treat the poor old cow Me dinner's always in I've tried on that parking. I'll have to run it again, fellas. All right, fellas. No worries, let's hear it. I might have been away for six months or more, but when I stick me key in her old front door, She's down there scrubbing the kitchen floor Cos she's my old lady I've done three rounds with a revolving door. <laughs> Have you got anybody with you uh, on this trip? You, are you a company? Oh, I've just got my uh, research assistant. 
research this little girl Friday. Lovely. How are you, darling? Yes, sir. Uh, 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 where did you find her? Well, she's an Australian lass. She's from the outback. I've had her for the last uh, day and a half, as a matter of fact. <laughs> she jetted over here to join me. I've got a bit of a turnover in secretaries, I have to be quite frank with you, Michael. It's the pressure, you see. Tremendous pressure these women are under. But uh, her name is... Uh, her name is Cliveen Jamesagong, as a matter of fact. It's an old Australian name. <laughs> now, tell me, finally, Sir Les, and thank you for, for your efforts tonight, spreading a bit of culture in our direction. Sir Les. Sir Les. Sir Les. Will you... Will you, in fact, stay, do you think, while... Uh, or for Dame Medna, who's about to make an appearance? Well, I will, but I wouldn't mind just nipping the amenity. The, the, the dunny. The dunny. The dunny. Is that a British expression as well for it the is. old, you know? Yeah, that's that. Huh? No worries. <laughs> Isn't it incredible, the cultural links between our countries? I wouldn't mind nipping into Powder Manoes Parking. Oh, I'll right. be back later. All right. Good so luck. It's been a big pleasure. Thank a you. big pleasure. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. So let's back. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.